Hey, it's Jim. It's uh, Saturday morning out in the shop. Things are uh, cool from overnight. And stove went out on me. So uh, anyways, I'm going to throw some gloves on because all this shit's pretty cold. This is the uh, still uh, 290 Farm Boss uh, consumer saw. Pretty much any of your stills are going to be fairly similar to this uh so we'll look on the clutch side of stuff now so just uh pulled the bar nuts and clutch cover off um regular maintenance stuff you should be cleaning some of this debris out uh most of the saws actually have a uh rubber uh chip deflector here that absorbs the impact if the chain comes off it won't chip the back of the uh clutch cover out these ones are just plastic a lot of the uh more commercial saws are going to be uh, cast. So, anyways, um, <clears throat> okay, so we're also going to want to clean a bunch of this stuff off. Um, make sure that uh, you've got the pads here. Uh, here's our chain adjuster. Um, we can check and make sure that that's actually moving the full range. Um, what I normally do is I'll adjust it forward and uh, add some grease on the threads on here. You can uh, just see here if I got a got a tool. Oops, sorry for bumping you. Okay. <clears throat> Should be able to just pull some of this off here and then. Uh, These ones are slightly different than the commercial ones. Actually, they're way different than the commercial ones. Anyways, uh, just make sure that she is functioning. Um, if you uh, don't loosen your bar nuts off when you uh, go to adjust your chain, then you'll end up stripping the threads on your chain adjuster. And it's just a small bolt here, basically. So you don't want to do that. And uh, if you end up uh, over tightening your chain, you can also put a lot of extra torque on, uh, on those threads. And... Uh, you really shouldn't need to have that much tension on a chain at any time. The uh, only time you'll throw a chain is uh, mostly from operator error and not as a result of the chain being loose to, uh, to a degree anyways. I'll do a video on uh, chain tension a lot of guys think that they got to tighten them right up so that uh, they won't throw a chain but all you're doing is <clears throat> wrecking a lot of your components especially the uh, crank bearing on the clutch side okay so okay so we threw a little bit of grease in there that's protected when the bar and the chain cover are on there so you're not normally going to get much for dust and chips in there so okay we will uh remove the e-clip they uh probably call it an e-clip because of its because of its shape don't lose that washer goes on top uh, i'd actually had this off and had it soaked in the parts bin um, i had a hard time getting it off to start with because it was so so plugged up with crap there's still a bit of stuff here that didn't come out. Um, so it tells me that basically that hasn't been off probably all year or maybe since the last guy that was doing saw maintenance for this company had uh, had it off. So you can see the amount of crap in there. That also contributes to a bunch of friction 
with your clutch. Um, so you just want to keep that clean. There's a little uh, needle bearing in there. This one here has not been greased for that duration either, and they should be. The stills <clears throat> don't have a uh, grease port on the top of the crankshaft. Uh, some of the Husqvarna's do if they've got the outboard clutch, which means the clutch sits this way, but uh, still doesn't do that. So you have to take them off and manually grease them. I'll go through that as we're putting it back together. <clears throat> what I really recommend is uh, instead of these spur sprockets, if you're, if you're looking for a heavier duty saw that you're gonna use quite a bit more, then you wanna go to one of these rim drive sprockets. I don't know if I still got the sprocket sitting around here from yesterday. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> okay, so it's a two-piece system. That way when the sprocket gets worn, you can just replace the sprocket. It actually floats, so it'll stay in alignment. Uh, a lot of these spurs, the way they wear, you can see those grooves. And then it starts to uh, wreck your drivers on your chain too. So uh, you can see my other video where I went through kind of chain and bar maintenance there for more details on that. Okay, then we can look at our springs in here. Um, if you ever have a saw that the chain keeps running on, you're trying to adjust your carburetor and uh, you can basically lower the uh, idle speed to basically the stall, a saw is going to stall and that chain keeps moving. Often it's because you've got a uh, either really badly stretched clutch spring or a broken one in here. And what happens is then there'll be one of the shoes on the clutch that actually stays engaged against the drum. Well, if I'm going to be able to pry one of these open just a little bit to show you. But um, basically, it'll allow it to stay open. And then it's making contact on the inside of the drum. And so the drum has to keep spinning. Normally, when the saw is idling, the clutch will keep going around because it's attached to the crankshaft. But the drum uh, isn't making contract, a contact until centrifugal force overpowers the strength of the springs that are trying to keep these closed. And then once centrifugal force takes over as the RPM increases, then these shoes spread apart and they end up making contact inside the drum and then it drives it. So if you're ever getting that situation, there's two things that are happening. Either you've got a broken clutch spring or an issue there, or you've got a lean condition where it's sucking air. It's got an air leak somewhere um, or a carburetor issue. But uh, a lot of the time, it's just one of these springs will break. Often uh, from it going back and forth, uh, they usually wear right on the kind of the uh, top of the hook part here and um, it's just kind of a, a maintenance item um, that you should check for and and that'll be that uh, taking the actual clutch off is a little bit complicated um, we basically need to maybe I can do it here pull our spark plug and uh, the only time that you'll probably have to uh, pull the clutch is either you end up with uh, a clutch spring broken or if you need to uh, replace the worm gear because you're not getting oil or you need to look at your oil pump. So I'll just uh, pull the spark plug and show you the better method of uh, pulling our clutch off. So just give me a sec here, I just gotta grab the cord. <clears throat> okay, so 
So what I normally do is bring my piston up near the top. <clears throat> I don't want to uh, feed this cord down and have an open port where it could end up going into like the muffler or something. Because uh, if the uh, piston starts to kink it or cut it because it's through that port, I'm not going to show you all that, but uh, take my word for it. Uh, you'll end up basically having to probably pull the pull the saw apart, and that's uh, a lot more work than necessary. So just leave your leave your piston as it's coming up. Leave it down about uh, three quarters of an inch, and then you're going to basically pack in a bunch of. Uh, like starter rope or something. And uh, what we're doing is taking up the space at the upper portion of the stroke of the piston against the combustion chamber in the top of the cylinder so that uh, <clears throat> it can't continue to turn over. And on these guys, to loosen your clutch off, it's actually to the right hand side. So righty loosey on a uh, flywheel clutch oops sorry we're on a, on a drive clutch on one of these i'm gonna have to use the impact driver or something even bigger i'm gonna pause you guys till i get it off pause you guys till I get it off. okay it's jim we're back I just uh, loosened this clutch off, like I said, righty loosey on these, lefty tidy. Okay. <clears throat> Bit of stuff built up in there. We'll clean that out. This is what I referred to as a worm gear. Basically, this actually drives your oil pump. It's not spinning around until your clutch is engaged. I'll just try and show you that. Okay, so the only time it's moving is when your clutch is spinning. Let's see, it spins this way. Okay, so if your saw is idling and the clutch isn't moving, then it just sits there and it doesn't puke oil all over the place. It's the way it should be anyways. Okay, so we want to look at those to make sure our threads are good and that the tip on the worm gear is still good too and that this steel isn't necessarily sliding around on it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this one's kind of at the point where it might be starting to slip. Might end up replacing that. And then if we were getting more issues with uh, oil or oil pump stuff, if all that stuff was still good, <clears throat> this is where we access our oil pump. It's in there. It's all covered in uh, goo. I think I have another one around here that uh, I can show you. I'll just grab it and then uh, we'll look at that. Okay, this one here came out of a uh, MS-362 from a few years ago. Guy had pulled a bunch of stuff out of it to look at it and then uh, didn't get things lined up right or something afterwards and basically it uh, actually melted that worm gear uh, into it so the only thing left was this basically and then all this melted nylon stuff is right around the gear itself i'll just see if i can pop some of that out of there don't stab myself with the screwdriver <clears throat> maybe i'm not gonna get to anyways um there's a little gear yeah you kind of see it there and that's what those threads on that pump or on the worm gear drive is the gear on this pump and so as oops, as that spins around it pumps the oil from the oil tank through the hose through the pump and then back up to your bar so uh you can check and make sure that uh <clears throat> that's still working 
that uh, none of these ports or galleries are plugged. And uh, try and keep all your stuff clean too is a really good kind of rule. I usually apply the chain brake just like I just did. And then what that allows you to do is get in underneath it. Um, a lot of times there's a lot of stuff that builds up underneath these chain brake bands. And what that'll do is uh, it almost forces the brake band to be in contact with the clutch drum because there's stuff in there. And so instead of that band being able to be all the way out the way it should and not making contact with the clutch drum, it causes it to stay squished in a bit. And then you're either having constant friction on there and you can see, see how this is kind of heated. The color or discoloration on there. So that's one of the things that, that happens. So then you're robbing your saw of power, creating a bunch of heat in here. I've seen, especially arborist saws, top handles with a lot of this housing has all been melted because of that heat. So it's just worth uh, keeping your stuff clean. I'm uh, maybe going a little bit uh, rougher on this than uh, I normally would, but uh, <clears throat> just uh, pick through it. Make sure that you don't stab into any of the uh, rubber hoses and stuff in here. Um, what I'm going to do is take this over to the solvent tank and and let it uh, soak in solvent. I'm just at a point here where I might be able to show you those some of the uh, impact of some of the heat damage. I know my camera's probably at a bad angle compared to the light here, but uh, something's going on here. I don't know if somebody threw a bunch of silicone stuff in or if no, it looks like it's just uh, a bunch of stuff that's actually kind of piled up in here. So anyways, uh, so that's that. I'll get her cleaned up and uh, we'll go back through putting it all back together and show you guys a couple tricks on that too. Okay. Get you. I got another little saw here from that same landscape company. This one's a 180C. It's almost brand new here. I still got the little uh, decal on the front there. Um, anyway, I just lifted the cover off and pretty sure the kill switch isn't working. So we'll have to fix that up. It's always worth uh, looking over your stuff before you run it. Whether you're a homeowner and especially if you're uh, working for somebody, make sure that uh, any of these little, little things, you catch them before uh, they end up being a an inconvenience or worse yet a safety hazard i know for sure that kill switch wouldn't work before so i end up trying to shut it off with the choke and that'll plug your saw up okay so just try and give you a little better better look at this thing it's already been in the solvent tank and i added some carb cleaner I think these guys must have been actually cutting some kind of oops, plastic pipe or something with it. Okay, I'll just try and give you a better view of the layout inside the clutch here. So this is our oil pump. There's the driven gear there. Um, I uh, put a lot of effort into cleaning this thing up already. I think they must have been cutting actually some kind of irrigation pipe plastic pipe or something with it it's uh it doesn't seem like it's just uh a normal pitch type build up it, it actually seems like it's kind of a rubbery plastic stuff but anyways that's what we've got <clears throat> um it's way easier to keep equipment clean and maintained than it is to try and make it look new after years of neglect so but uh 
like I said, just make sure that uh, the stuff that's critical, like around your around your chain brake inside here, has uh, been cleaned out so that it's not going to be rubbing. Try and get rid of as much stuff as you can in there uh, frequently. And I'll put this back on the tripod and then we'll go through uh, reassembly and greasing the bearing and stuff. Okay, so we're reassembly. I'm gonna make sure our chain brake is uh, retracted so that the band is all the way open. Our uh, worm gear drops in over top of the driven gear on the oil pump. So just make sure that happens. <clears throat> then our washer. So it says top, but actually probably what would be more appropriate for it to see is out. This sits like a hat. If you sit it the wrong way, it's going to push all the other components out too far. And then your E-clip won't fit in the slot. So, so it's like a cowboy hat. It sits that way. That, <clears throat> this depression here uh, sits over top of the worm gear. So, so it actually rides a little bit lower. Okay. Then uh, we've got our clutch. Kind of cleaned it up, looked it over. Um, check the springs. I don't know if it's easier if I set her this way. Anyway, so like I said, uh, it's kind of the opposite. So lefty is actually tidy on this. Um, we've still got our rope in the combustion chamber. We just want to spin the flywheel side the opposite way uh, to take up the slack so it brings the piston back around the opposite direction but back up to kind of like the top dead center side so that uh, we've got the resistance as soon as we go to turn this left that it's tight there uh, i'm not going to put it on with impact driver because you don't need to all i'm going to do is just snug it up a little bit okay like that um but the the uh, ones that Husqvarna uses that are the external clutches, sometimes with those, you want to put them on a little bit better because uh, if you ever run it without a cover on and you release the throttle or whatever, if it slows down quickly, these will actually unwind and go shooting. But uh, you should never run it without the clutch cover on anyway. So. Okay, so we remove our cord out of there. <clears throat> You guys are going to remind me to put the spark plug back in, right? Okay, thanks. <clears throat> now, we're on to our little clutch bearing with the, where we go here? There we go. All these little, little needle bearings here, they do uh, require some grease. Okay, so we'll uh, go through the easy way to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill this about half full or so with uh, with grease, um, and then all I do is basically uh, let's see here. I'm gonna try and uh, see if I can upgrade this one here to uh, the rim rim drive sprocket on this, but uh, I guess we're kind of multitasking here now. We uh, There's always a little notch here where the uh, stub on that worm gear sticks out, where the clutch drives it. So we want to stick that in. Often there's a little mark on the outside of the drum. So that helps you figure out where it is. If you don't have one, then uh, you can just Take a pen, nothing cooperates when you're trying to make a video. Take a pen, make a mark on it. Drop it on there and then uh, set her on. Okay, now we've got that on there. We want to uh, grease our bearing. So all I'm gonna do is basically set this over the end of the crankshaft. I'm gonna hold my finger over the end and then push it on. What that's gonna do is force the grease 
out through all of those bearings so that it's actually packed uh, in a pressurized type manner. Uh, that one's not going to work. It's too big. So I'll end up uh, having to probably replace this uh, clutch. Anyways, for now, I'll just put the old one back on so that you can see kind of how that's going to work. But basically, whoop, now all our grease fell out. And welcome to my world. <clears throat> okay, so what we're doing, that's over the worm gear now. I'm going to zoom you guys in. I'll clean this up and I'll zoom you in. Well, near as I can figure on iPhones, they don't have a zoom feature. So, we'll move you closer. I'll try not to bump the tripod. Here we go again. Okay, so we... we uh, throw grease in there basically i'm going to set the little bearing inside the spur on the clutch drum my worm gear is there i'm going to set this over it what i'm going to do is plug that hole with my thumb that's going to force the grease through the sprocket or through the uh, needle bearings just like it did sorry if my arm was in the way there Okay, so that pressurizes uh, the grease and causes it to spread through all of those little bearings in that race assembly there. Okay, I am going to end up having to uh, replace this clutch drum, but I'm just trying to show you and get this, get this completed. Okay, so then we've got the outer washer. It's going to go on like that as well. We have our E-clip. <clears throat> These ones are stamped. You'll have a rounded edge, and then you've got a rougher edge. Um, what I find always is that, that that rounded edge, if you put it on the inside, it actually goes on and off a lot easier. That uh, other rough edge, quite often it'll get stuck in there, okay? And then we're gonna take our bar wrench and just set it over top of that e-clip that way if we don't get it on there it's not going to go shooting across the shop or out into the grass and bushes or whatever if we're doing this out in the field so okay and then hopefully we can just get it to snap on okay <clears throat> there we go and then it's just a matter of uh throwing that uh clutch cover on after we clean that up I uh, threw a new pad on on the top here that was gone and uh, there we are like I said this is going in the bin until I get the new uh, clutch drum okay we talked about uh, throwing our plug back in you guys were going to remind me so thanks for that again uh, spinner in I I gap it uh, between 23 and 27 thou usually. I went through that in the other video, so you can you can check one of those out for the air filter and spark plug and stuff. Um, and then we're just gonna, again, snug it up so that the uh, crush washers crush, makes a good seal in there. Don't forget to put your cap back on. Put this deflector on. If you, uh, if you did watch my other video, you'll know. And if you didn't, then you better watch it so you know which way this goes depending on what time of year you're doing stuff. Okay. And uh, that. Throw our cover back on. Must have bumped the throttle while I was doing the cleaning there. Okay. And then uh, with the recoil side, this was also all covered in gunk. Um, it's easy to uh, remove a pound, and no word of a lie, a pound of uh, debris that builds up on these things. Uh, there's little cooling fins in here. That's how your saw is cooled. 
uh, just basic neglect. All these uh, fins on the flywheel can end up plugged up with stuff so it's moving less air. Uh, your cooling fins on the cylinder end up plugged up with that pitchy, gunky residue. And uh, that reduces the ability for that engine to cool itself. So that'll impact its runnability. Okay, anyways, uh, so yeah, keep that side clean too. Um, there's, your, there's your recoil starter. These only use one paw. Uh, some of the commercial or professional saws use two. So it reduces the amount of drag or tension on uh, on this little piece of plastic when it uh, engages to uh, to the flywheel here to start the saw but uh, I've got a video on there already on uh, replacing those I think so okay now it doesn't really... oh there it goes yeah okay then uh, you'll have one with a, a bigger hat thing on it that uh, goes on your um, chain break and the other ones these ones aren't retained it's nice when they are so that uh, they don't fall out but anyways it's, it's the entry level kind of budget consumer saw so it is what it is right but uh, anyway we'll snug those up and then like I said it's going back in the box until I get the replacement parts and I'll finish putting her together but uh, thanks for tuning in have a good day Oh yeah, and like and subscribe if you didn't yet. Thanks.